Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. A question came up about how do we quiet the chattering inner voice, particularly whenever there's nothing much going on and, and it's just there chat, 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 going on. And particularly if it's talking like nothing very important. And sometimes there's a conversation going on between you and that voice. And um, so is there an advantage, first of all, to quieting that? And if there is, then what, uh, how do we go about that? How do we control that, that mechanism in the brain that, uh, that likes to just dominate the conversation? So um, first question, you know, is it important to do that? And first of all, understanding that that voice is, that's a product of millions of years of DNA, of, of, of evolution that's coming through your DNA. And it's something that your brain is programmed to do. It's called, you know, one name for it is the, the default mode network. And that means that, that it's the, default mode it's the it's the the default setting whenever you are not task oriented so if you're doing something the voice goes away and then the minute you're back in neutral it comes back and chirp 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 and that is something that is built into the into the uh, the human brain and it's sort of a, a survival mechanism that we have carefully developed over you know eons and uh, that's because there's a tendency to uh, ev evolutionarily speaking the a tendency of of people who are able to be alert and were somewhat cautious and, and somewhat uh, um, even anticipatory tended to survive a little bit better in you know for a long time in the in the jungle and whatnot and so they uh, they had they had an advantage an evolutionary advantage and so that those genes get passed on since there's so much stimulation going on in the world around us right now it's no longer such an advantage it's something that is that's uh, a bit of a distraction or and can even lead to anxiety it can lead to you know mental problems that if we uh, it goes beyond the just the you know oh shut up already to like you know the voice is just keeps keeps hammering away at you with a lot of stuff that is really negative so getting it uh, to be able to to learn to control your brain is i i think one of the most important skills that we uh, that we are developing in our kung fu, learning to control your brain, because that that default mode network is is it's going to activate until you train it to not. And um, the easiest way that I have found to train it to not is to give yourself a task that allows you to focus so then oh energy is pulled into other parts of your brain to start to focus on that task like say in meditation if you give um if you give it the task of say uh, feeling your breath being there with your breath and just really focus on that that is a task. And it's like, oh, okay. So I'm succeeding to the degree that, you know, say like I'm able to count my breaths or I'm able to feel my breaths or whatever it is, whatever the challenge that I have is. If the, the meditation is, is staring at a candle, you know, oh, good. As long as I'm doing that, that task is being, I, is being executed by me and so therefore, I am not going to that other place. It shows my brain and my body mind that I am indeed capable of controlling this mechanism. 
and it turns off that noise box for whatever length of time. And oh, suddenly like it is possible. So then you have this, you, then you start to, your, your nervous system starts to have a new definition of what the, uh, your, your, your baseline setting is at that point. If you're able to move into the gap between thoughts by doing these, by being this, you know, giving yourself a task that allows you to, to find, to really just focus on being in the present moment without thinking about it, that is you're moving into a non-objective state of awareness, then, ah, that's, a, that's an even bigger step. And it's like you start to identify with that as, as your default setting. You say like, oh yeah, yeah okay, I can, I can do that. And then you notice whenever the, the thoughts start pouring back. So the key that I, uh, I have found for, you know, uh, for controlling your nervous system is by conscious feeling and conscious doing. That is, if you can be mindful about the sensory information coming in and take it in as raw information without thinking about it, without processing it, without saying, oh, it's really hot in here or whatever it is that whatever commentary you want to make on that. You feel your hand and you say, oh, well, you know, I should clip my fingernails. Whatever story you come up with, you know, put you back in object-based consciousness and that gets you, the brain starts churning up again and saying, oh, okay, good. I've got some more thoughts about that. And uh, then we get into a, um, we get back into, into the circuit where we're queuing the, uh, uh, the choir and, and they start chirping away and, and you're back into it. So the more you can consciously feel and consciously do. So the conscious feeling is you're activating your afferent neural network, your sensory neural network. That is, if you can, you can actually take that in and do that. And you can try it right now. Just, just take your index finger and touch your thumb with that. And then rub it back in and just feel that. And then hold that and just continue to feel that deliberately, consciously, volitionally. You're making that happen. And notice that your mind immediately calms. And that's because you are giving a task to your body mind and it takes it out of that default mode network for the moment. And then you go in the other hand and you say, oh, finger, thumb, get them together, squeeze them, rub them together, feel that, bing. You're in the gap between thoughts. And so, you know, you get, there's all kinds of mudras, you know, these hand positions, which each have their own little energies. And you can do a lot of exploration with that. You could, a simple, Activity would be to hold each of the fingers with the thumb and hold it for some time, breathe while you're doing it. You're giving yourself a task and that gives it, that allows you to move into that, into that gap between thoughts. It shuts down the default network for the moment, but you don't want to lose that default mode network because it, it's, it's there for a reason. It's there to, you know, keep you, it updates your narrative on a moment by moment basis. It lets you know who you are and what you're doing and, and uh, what the circumstances you're, you are in, what are they? And so you don't want to lose that, but you want to be able to control it. Say like, oh yeah, so right now I want to just be in that, that calm, clear-minded, centered state. And so you just, just very simply, the key here is not the holding of the position. That's not going to do anything. 
that's not going to do much for you, okay? But it is the conscious feeling that you bring to that, the mindfulness that you bring to that, that activates a different part of your brain and pulls the energy out of the default mode network, which is getting a whole lot of, a whole lot of attention for most of your life, and says, all right, we'll take a little break from that. And you go into that and, oh, you're back into that clear-minded state. You can do that with your breath. You feel your breath. Don't just breathe. You actually inhale and feel, you know, what's going on there. Your diaphragm is contracting the muscles. Your diaphragm is a big muscle and it's pushing down on your internal organs and you're feeling the organs squishing with the, with the, inta the break and, you know, the intake of, of breath. You feel your lungs filling up and there's all kinds of things we can do with breath that uh, give you different effects. But it really goes back to that simple thing of, you know, feeling into that. Going on the other side, the, we're going into the efferent or motor neural network. That's where you get into conscious doing. And this is, this is really key, and it's real important for a lot of the stuff we've been discussing lately, and that learning how to consciously do, we disconnect from another pre-conscious program that, that is installed you know, by, by our evolution, and that is to activate, anytime we want to do something, a tendency to activate a stress response in order to do it. So to be able to consciously, mindfully do and let go of that tension is, you know, so much of what we're practicing in Tai Chi Chuan particularly is learning how to consciously do without that stress response. Again, we're training the brain to say that, oh, I do not have to go to that place. You're, you're reorganizing the architecture in your brain when you do that. You're reprogramming your amygdala so that things are not recognized as threats, that simple actions are not necessarily threats to your survival. If, you, if you're used to driving a car like this, you know, there is a, you know, there's a, you're in a stress response you don't need all that muscular tension in order to move the wheel. So it's a uh, bringing mindfulness to that allows you to disconnect from that. So you are controlling this very primitive part of your brain, this fight, flight, freeze response, which has a tendency to kick in many times a day and in just odd kind of ridiculous ways. You know, if um, I was just writing about this recently, we're talking about how uh, a simple action of speaking to a group of people will send some people into like absolute terror. And uh, so, you know, it's like, ah, no, I can't, you know, I can't address a group of people. And it's because that, that stress response kicks in and it, Whenever that happens in your brain, what's happened to the, you know, your frontal lobes, about 80% of the blood immediately goes to the back of your head. It retreats from your frontal cortex, goes into the back of your head and into the, the reptile brain. And it's like looking around feverishly to try to get out of here. And, but it's a, uh, it's not necessary. So these are things we can train and we are training with our, with our Kung Fu, we're learning to consciously feel and consciously do. And that, if you boil it down, the, the one practice that we can do all day, every day, to transform, to rewire your nervous system is that. So um, uh, questions, comments, thoughts? Did that help, Valerie? Good, good. Anybody, uh, 
All good. All good. All good. All right. Okay. Jonathan. I just saying uh, it's sort of what you're saying about feeling this whole insubstantial substantial relation that the hands have throughout the form. Just tracking that has a way of keeping one kind of in the feeling state within the form. Right. And it's really subtle, the difference of feeling as, and as you transfer it from one to the other. So, so to stay with that, it's just, it's just almost one whole way to do the form. Absolutely. That, that awareness. Yeah, great. And you know, going back to the point I was making earlier, you know, that is a task. Right. Right. That is Very a task. So. I'm, I'm saying, oh, so I'm shifting my brain into a, oh, hey, brain, here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep track of what the hands are doing. And so then it doesn't go into the default mode network because it only does that when it's not, when it's just hanging out, you know, and it's, you know, sitting around drinking coffee. And, uh, and this way it's like, no, no, I got a job to do. So it goes out there and, it, and, and you're, you are intentionally focused on, on, on the task at hand. Right, especially since the task of the choreography is long past needing to have conscious thought. You can just do it without, you know, you can think of a million different things and walk through the form, but you can't do that if you're really focused on a specific task, like the substantial insubstantial. Right, and you know, going back to the mudra thing, it's like how you hold your hand right. in your form can, right. It, right. It, right. It, it, it can be a, a, you know, yeah, what are you what are you doing with your hand? Are your fingers spread right. apart? Are they are they together? You, are you pointing with your index finger? You know, uh, you know what is it? What is the angle of your wrist? You know, there's such detail you can get into, which you can give your mind an opportunity to to frolic and cavort as and and doing that calms down that voice. And so if you Anytime you're find you're find, getting frustrated with your default mode ne mechanism, make friends with it. Thank it for the wonderful job it's doing and keeping you alive and keep having done so this long. And hey, how about we play a game now? And then you and it'll say, oh boy, oh boy, let's play a game. And then you say, yes, let's. I'm going to put my index finger and touch my my thumb with that. How about that? And it'll say, yay. You know, and <laughs> and then you're you're back in <laughs> you're back in in the game. So it's a uh, uh, it's an endless source of joy when you get into it as a game that you're playing. So anything you're doing in life then can become this opportunity to you know embrace the moment, and you you can be a a, a dolphin, you know, <laughs> just endlessly being stimulated by your environment. Peter, you're, you're on mute, Peter. Amazing how I keep forgetting that. Yeah, this is wonderfully interesting. I'm thinking that, you know, this, your example of, um, you know, this simple thing, it, it strikes me also as an embodiment of a principle that's very interesting uh, that I think about a lot. It's the balance and integration of the, the active uh, creative side of life and practice with the open receptive side, because just doing that, it's both active creative and it brings together the active creative and the open receptive. You know, the, you know the dancer is hearing the music and dancing, you know. That's right. The, you're leading and following at the same time. Right. And, and so you're absolutely right. And and being able to identify them as separate things, it's not just mushing them together, but if you're aware of both the active, the yang, and the receptive, the yin, and you're able to, to do both, both the substantial and the insubstantial, get those and be able to differentiate them, separate them, and then integrate them and then separate them and then integrate them, then you are creating energy. You are, and you're creating new neural connections. You are making your brain uh, smarter and younger, and you're clearing away the noise that builds up in uh, throughout the nervous system. And you get lots of, you know, the more you, 
do nothing and just sort of hang out and he just with that with the noise going on you're um you collect these standing waves in in your body and just sort of you know the we think of it in tai chi as you know stuck chi or block chi you know stagnant chi but you, know, you can also think of it neurologically as as that you you're not stimulating you're not getting movement in they and that those parts of your body and you're so you consequently are getting uh you're getting stagnant and so just any kind of movement just keep keep it keep it going we're 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 like sharks you got to keep moving you know in order to uh you know <laughs> that's the that's that's how we're how we're designed and uh and and find the stillness in movement and that's that paradox that's inherent within tai chi and find the the movement and stillness and then you are constantly it's like working a bellows you know you get you get something going there cool anybody else going once okay good all right so moving on um a question comes up often uh Someone says to me, uh, so and so told me that lifting weights is bad for you, bad for your tai chi. And uh, I, um, I say maybe. And uh, depends on how you're doing it. And so if your focus is on just lifting a weight, however I can you're probably working against what you're trying to develop in tai chi so that is your uh, you're getting into bad habits with your nervous system your bad habits with your with your muscles so you and it's you're creating new patterns and reinforcing old patterns that cause you to uh, make it difficult to overcome whenever you want to let go of those so I think a distinction I've been making for for quite a while now is distinguishing between the yin action of muscles and yang, and and if um, when we're in a yang extension, we are asking the muscles to contract so that we can we can push away from from whatever from the earth from our body whatever when we're in a yin, it's more of a support mode, and that is we're allowing the energy, we're supporting the energy coming in. We're not collapsing without, and we're not tensing up. Whenever we're tensed up, we're doing both yin and yang at the same time in not integrated, but in competition or in uh, conflict. So learning, so the, the other side of the maybe is you can use resistance as a way of training yourself to be sung in the presence of, of um, you know, force. So learning how to handle that. And this is a, a venerable tradition within the martial arts and, and in Taiji as well, learning how to use various objects to, to be able to get sung and handle that object. So I'd be able to handle progressively greater uh, amounts of force without, without tensing up. And so, I mean, there's an old story, you know, where the, uh, uh, the farm kid goes to the master and says, hey, can you teach me, you know, Kung Fu? And problem is I can't, I got work to do all day and I can't really practice. And so the master says, okay, well, go find a, uh, uh, a piglet and uh, you know, pick up a baby pig and carry it around and do that every day, come back in a year. And so he comes back in a year and he's like, you know, and he, he has learned how to very sung, <laughs> sungly uh, handle a progressively greater amount of, of, of weight that, you know, and, and be able to control in a loving way the, uh, the, the pig is so substitute the animal of your choice. But the, uh, uh, the, the basic idea there is if we start to 
use a small amount of, of resistance and we are able to get sung in that, then we can gradually increase the amount of force that we're able to handle. We're allowing ourselves to become confident that we can, we can handle that without tensing up, without pushing back, without resistance ourselves, without muscular resistance. And so the, uh, we're, in, in, in a sense, we're using the substantial to create more insubstantiality. That is, we're able to, to utilize progressively increasing substantiality to allow us to then handle the insubstantial aspect of it so that we don't, we don't have to carry around the pig all the time in order to be, to feel that power. And uh, so uh, what we're gonna do, uh, I would ask you to, if you have any kind of object around that has any kind of heft in it all, I, you know, I'm gonna use a, uh, a little ball like this, this is a, little, a weighted ball, it's uh, what, six pounds. So, you know, you can also use like a, uh, if you got a dumbbell like that, you know, you can, you can use that. Uh, if you're lacking those things, grab a book, uh, uh, a vase, uh, anything with a little bit of heft to it. And we're gonna do a little exercise with that. And we're gonna explore what it feels like to, uh, you know, to go through some exercises and to be very sung and also explore the fong, that is the reaching out with this object. So uh, uh, I'll give you a minute to, uh, to grab that. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and this is also using the idea here of conscious feeling and conscious doing. So when we get more sung, we are then able to overcome, to reprogram from the, uh, that stress response and be able to just recognize that, oh yeah, this is just stuff and I'm moving stuff around. Okay, so uh, if you want to stand up and uh, you can also, you can also do this sitting. So let's begin by uh, getting our three pillars in. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown of your head. Tuck in the chin. Open the jade pillow gate. Knees are bent in your Feeling yourself sinking into the earth. Push away from the earth. So feel that yang push. Your muscles contracting as you're going up and then ah, sink into your legs and feel the yin support. Feel the sung. And you can just release the hip joints and just feel yourself relaxing down into that. Reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. Shoulders are very relaxed, they're hanging, but notice that my arms have a little shape to them. They're not just hanging like that, they're rounded. Feel your index fingers, reach with your index fingers. Feel that connection. I'm going to do a couple of movements. Okay. Bow and reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Hands are relaxed. Coming up, reach out, extend, fong, F A N G. Push away from the earth and then, ah, sink into the, sink into your quad, sink into your legs. Coming down, reach down with the elbows, reach down with the wrists, the hands. Again, bow 
and inhale, come up, elbows, wrists, fingers, and push away and sink. Pause a moment and just feel the energy in your hands, feel throughout feel your feet, feel it throughout the whole body. Good. And so remember that thing that I'm telling you to push away and then sink. This is just a way of, of really familiarize yourself with the sung kwa, being able to release your hip joints and sink into the support of your legs using that yin support of their muscles rather than the yang extension. So now pick up your object, whatever it may be. And push away with your, your legs coming up and then ah, uh, sink. And Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists. Carry, feel, feel the weight of your object to carry that up. Bring it back toward you. Ah, sink down. Way and sink. This time, come up with the ball closer to you. And then reach out, reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, with your fingers, reaching out, extending. Feel the fong, feel the, feel the space between your shoulder blades opening up. Push away, it's very soon. So you should be getting progressively more released, more relaxed into, into your song as you do this and reaching out, elbows, wrists, bong, you're extending, opening. Feel the, your body, feel the song in your arms even as you are fong, even as you're extending. You're releasing the muscular tension, feeling that yin support of the arms. And come back and down. So as we're doing this, we're, we're doing it just enough to release the, that stress response. So we're consciously doing. Push away and sung. Ball comes up close to your body. Reaching out. Circling out. Open. Feel that extension and down. Do it once from the side. Do it once from the side. Okay. I'm going to do it from the side. Push away and sink. Ah, sung. Carry. Reach. Feel that. And sink. Your arms, your whole body is relaxed as you can be while still handling that additional pressure. Ball comes up inside and reach out. Feel that, feel that extension. 
Feel your arms very relaxed, your shoulders relaxed, opening your shoulders and down. Thank you. Hmm. Now, going to turn to the left, reach out. Feel the ball of your right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left so you're sinking into that right leg and then turning. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and then sink and bring the ball into the body. You're making a big oval. Reach out. And we're going to go back the other way now. So feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and turn to the right. Reach out. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and turn. Back to center. Okay, now put your object down. Feel the balls of your feet, get your three pillars in, balls of the feet, crown of the head, elbows, wrists, fingers. Ah, sung. Carrie, bring your arms out. And feel the space that your object occupied, feel that between your hands and feel the chi that's being generated. Feel that chi ball that you've got there. And bring that down. Sung, very sung, and carry that chi ball up, elbows, wrists, reaching out, and bring it back toward you, and close to the body, and bring it down. Carry the ball. Bring it up, close to the body, and reach out. Down. Carry, reaching, extending, feel the ball. Carry and bring down. Carry it up. Reach out, feel that. Turn to the left, reaching out, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral left, and then turn to the right. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral right, and then bring the ball in, turning to the left. Reach out. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and bring the ball in and turn. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and then turn to the left. Bring that back to center. Now standing with your hands, feeling the chi ball, I want you to feel, don't just imagine, but feel 
your arms doing this. Feel that energy. You've got up. That pattern is familiar to you now. So just feel that. And you're going to feel it in a very insubstantial way. It may not even be a fully formed thought. It could just be a, a sense, an energy that's, that's there and available to you. And repeat that, each time speeding it up a little more. Good, now let that go. And just hold the position and feel the potentiality there of that movement, of that energy without doing anything. Now let that go. Now you're going to feel this movement without moving. Let your body feel it. Don't use your don't use your mind. Your think your thinking mind. Let your body feel into that circle and then speed that up. Faster and faster. As fast as you can comfortably do with that, by feeling yourself getting tense. Now let that go. And feel the potentiality of those ovals. Now let that go. Palms down and hands come down. Push away and get very soon. Release down. And feel the energy that's circulating in your arms and your hands, your fingers. Feel into your breath. Feel the heat being generated between your feet and the floor. Reach up with the crown of your head. This time reach up to about six inches above the top of your head. As if you're going to touch something there with an insubstantial energy. Now let all that go. Step in. Take a deep breath. Gather and disappear all that. Disappear the chi, the body, the thoughts. Throw it all away. Just dissolve into the emptiness.
please take a seat. Hmm. How'd that go? Good. Any thoughts, questions? Did you check my connection there? I keep that screen keeps popping off. Any questions or thoughts? All good? Can't see anybody. I've lost my I've lost my video. There we are. Okay. Valerie. Well, it was funny because I noticed when holding the object, um one one side of my butt wanted to tighten. I mean it wasn't that much weight. So it was easy to just okay, so relax that. Uh, and then when we switched to the no weight, my butt did the same thing. <laughs> so it was, you know, gave it permission to just relax, you know, no big deal here. But uh, yeah. That's just fabulous. That's fabulous. Is that that's the kind of uh, awareness we want to cultivate. We want to learn to control the body mind by bringing awareness to it, by bringing mindfulness to it. And saying, okay, okay, but uh, do you really need to do this right now? You know, and <laughs> have a little conversation, yeah, establish some priorities, you know, what, what's going on here? And uh, learning to be able to move without having that internal resistance, that, that sense of, of shooting ourselves in the foot every time we try to do something. Peter. Yeah, a question, you know, when uh, in, in that sort of practice and in many practices, when you you experience an energy that you, you know, like the ball between your hands uh, or that when you kind of send it up and down with um, your energy body or your mind without moving your physical body. Uh, and there's an energy that's there in your experience that wasn't there before. Do you think that you're developing and creating energy or are you be connecting and becoming aware of connecting to and becoming aware of an energy field that's already there you're just like hooking up with an energy that's all that that's already there a flow that's already there uh well uh can be both so if, if i want to make a a uh a statue out of marble. If I'm a sculptor and want to make a statue out of marble, there is the, the stone is already there, but the creation's not there. So the uh, so we we can it's it's a dance, you know. And I like to think of it as creating energy, because energy for me is a statement of relationship. It's a statement of how one piece of stuff lines up with another piece of stuff and the the effect that they have on each other and that is in my mind it's it's always something is a a product of consciousness that is you you know you're until you focus on it as energy it's not energy it's just you know more of what is so uh, so yes it's i i think i consider it both both uh, you're working with what's there but you're also creating. So, and, and, you know, I think that's, that's uh, essential to what we're doing. We're working with the big chi, but we're not limited by that. You know, we're narrowing it down. We're focusing it. We're making it do tricks for us. So there's a creation that happens there. Yeah, Richard. Um, working with the object made us the soon part of the exercise uh, much more tangible to me. Good. Um, that that was very very interesting. Uh, thank good. you. Good, good. And that's really what we're doing with with that. We're we're you know making taking something substantial, and 
allowing yourself to say, oh, how do I deal with that? It's, you know, you can do your Taiji for, for a thousand years, but if you don't really actually encounter substantiality with it, then, you know, you what do you got? And, uh, but this way you're, you're playing with substantial and insubstantial and you're learning how to, to operate this, this lovely, lovely device here and make it, make it cool, do cool tricks for you. So it's, uh, you know, you want to be able to, to feel the substantiality of your physical form because that's part of the, part of the game. You know, if, if without that, then we were, uh, you know, it's, um, I don't know what it is, but it's all abstraction. Yes, Scott. Well, I have to say when you had us moving it faster and faster without moving, I was starting to get a little dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can happen. And, and so and, and it, when you do that, you really want to accentuate your sung. You know, really get, uh, you know, because it, it becomes like like a windmill, you know, if the, if, if, if the, there's no sung, you know, going on there, then then it just gets blown away. But if you have the sung there, then the wind, the, the mill goes, the, uh, the windmill goes around and around and, and you get you have some a, a cool effect. And but, yeah. um, I think it's uh, probably obvious, but um, I think my weight was probably a little too heavy, but the idea in the beginning part with the weight is to try and it's supposed to be fairly effortless, right? And then work your way up. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you don't want to work, you know, you don't want to start with a hundred pound weight, you know, that you, you want to do something, you know, like I had a six pounder here, which, you know, with two arms, I, I, I can handle that pretty easily. But there are some people who would have difficulty do the, even the exercises we we're doing without, without a lot of muscular tension with even that. So a three pound weight, okay, that's half of that. And that might be easier or pick up a book, you know, and, and do it with that or whatever it is, you, you know, whatever it is you, uh, you do with your cat, you know, uh, <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever works for you. That's a whole nother level of challenge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, ask, I, I had a 10 pound weight and for the most part it was fine except one spot across my back which I couldn't release the tension on so I was kind of like I didn't know whether to stay with that one and try and release that or drop the weight or I don't know I have to mess with it I guess you uh, you know what you do that is if you want to use a heavier weight like that you simplify the the exercise and smaller movements so you're but there's still, it's still the emphasis is there on, can I be sung and do this? Can I feel into this and not activate my internal conflict and still make this work? I had a, I had a lighter weight, but my wife wrestled it out of my hands. So. Yeah, she's, she's tough that way. <laughs> she's scrappy. <laughs> Richard. I was just going to say, start with a small pig. <laughs> I love it. Great. I love it. That's great. Peter, you got something else? No. Um, okay. Anybody else? Great. Thank you all so much. It's been fun. I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Maria. Love you all. Thank you, Maria. Love you guys. Love you Thank guys. You. Thank you.